Welcome back, you filthy last Epoch players. So, I'm not saying filthy traveler. I've seen it in the comments. I'm not saying it. Filthy last Epoch players. Anyway, um, all right. So, what are we playing around with here today? Well, one of the, I guess, most prolific minion builds of the last however many leagues on Path of Exile has always been Summon Raging Spirits, which has been just flaming skulls flying around the screen. Anyway, that gave me an idea because there is a skill that sort of looks the same, which is Hungering Souls. Now, ignore the damage on the tooltip. I'm sort of switching between what would be better between gear right now. I'm thinking more armor, but anyway, I'll figure that out as I go. Um, <clears throat> so basically, I've made SRS in Last Epoch, which is really cool. A couple of things here. It's an Ignite stacking build, so we're going to stack a ton of Ignite so you don't need a crit. The other thing is it uses like these Overlord modifiers that come natively with the Warlock, because it does use Warlock. Now, the way that this works... Generally, with the way that this skill works is, yeah, you could level it up to Eternal Pyre, but there's a complication here with Isolation, which means that you can only have one soul that you could cast. It's bigger, but it's not as cool. Now, I don't do that. I have many souls, which procs a ton of Ignite. I think I've gotten about 120 Ignite stacks so far, and I'm going to keep pushing that up with better gearing, because right now this is like um, just in early mo uh, Empowered Monoliths, but it does pretty well so far. Um... Basically, uh, this uses an item called Soulfire. Now, what Soulfire does, 100% of Hungering Soul's base damage is converted to fire damage, usually necrotic. Now, if we can self-ignite, we get 100% armor on top of this as well. So I'm going to be armor stacking and finding a different way to proc self-ignite as well. And then you also get 8% more spell damage to ignited enemies with 146% chance to ignite on hit with a fire skill and necrotic skills, which is what Hungering Souls is. And Hungering Souls ignite on hit instead of possessing. Which means, I'm not entirely sure of this yet, whether the possession stat that exists on the Hungering Souls tree actually refers to uh, ignite stacks or ignite on hit. I'm not 100%, but irrespectively, we ignite everything pretty consistently with an absolute uh, flurry of, uh, of Hungering Souls, burning Hungering Souls. Uh, so that's basically the biggest catalyst that makes this work. But beyond this point, things that you want to scale on this build are cast speed, uh, fire dot damage over time, flat fire damage, and uh, pretty much any other dot stat that you could get into the build, uh, as we can see here. So damage over time and also a mana reduction as well. You realistically need to use a wand on this build so that we can get it down to eight, which means we fully sustain cast uh, the casting, uh, you know, constant casting, which you can see basically don't even feel it regenerate, and I'm at level 81. So the other thing we do to proc more ignites is we use uh, Chthonic Fissure, which is awesome in its own right, and we also use Infernal Shade, which you would have seen the explosions in the B-roll. So we proc Infernal Shade, we hit out our Hungering Souls, which is our main damage dealer to proc more ignite stacks, which then burns the enemy down, and then we hit Chthonic Fissure, which then does even more damage again. And then beyond that, we have this crazy ass bone golem, which, uh, 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 was it, uh, blood bone golem, B because he's just a, he's literally just a meat bag to uh, pull packs and taunt and basically get enemies to attack him. So in our build, we also want to scale some minion health. We're not too concerned about anything to do with his actual damage output. I don't need him to do damage. I just need him to draw aggro. And that's one of our defensive layers in this build. And then beyond that, we've also got Transplant, so we can get around quickly and then regenerate some health and the blood spat splats on the ground as well. Basically, the idea and concept of the build, uh, is it working? Yep, blaze through the campaign with no real issues. Um, the way the defense is going to work on this build, currently it's got a bit of health on it, a fair bit of health, and I'm going to keep stacking health and go armor route. Uh, and right now, I'm still pretty low on the armor. My gear needs to be vastly improved to be able to improve upon that. We do use Bone Clamor uh, Babu, uh, Babu as well for our helm. Now I was playing around the use of Dark Shroud Cinders, which sort of does work, and also Calamity, which is really cool and perfectly synergizes with this setup. Gives us cast speed and everything else. But alternatively, you could also use plus Hungering Souls in the helm with uh, cooldowns, health, and other stats, which is probably a route that I'll probably end up taking in the far end game. But yeah, anyway, let's get into the gearing and talk about the build. This is just a really cool build. Now... Uh, just before I get into that, is this a good build? So far, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Probably the most fun I've had. Uh, and if you guys want to see me try and replicate PoE builds in Last Epoch as well, happy to do that. There's plenty of ways to do that. Anyway, let's get into the gearing. Okay, so gearing section-wise. So for this, for the purpose of this video, we're using Bone Clamor. 
which is actually one of the the items you use when you're using es stacking um or self-ignite es stacking so if you wanted to do that strategy which i'm not going to include here you could do a bit of research and figure out how to make that work you could make it work here um then on my amulet i'm using an amulet which gives me implicit fire res and lightning res and then basically going for poison resistance I did get mana on this roll and damage over time. You want to try and stack more defenses, and if you can get crit avoidance, I'd recommend that than you know health regeneration rate at this stage. Um, then we use woven flesh, uh, which drops pretty natively as you do the first boss encounter when you get into monoliths. So um, it's just a good early game item, but definitely by no means an end game item. Alternatively, you could also farm out a dark shroud, which is really easy to get as well. Um, but take your pick; either or would be fine when you're getting up into empower monoliths initially. Now I'm using a Defiance of the Forgotten Knight. This is nowhere near Abyss. Um, there's actually a shield that I'm after, which I'll have out in the second build, but I've got a target farm it. Uh, but at this stage, it does give you a lot of block. It does apply time rot uh, to attackers when hit, which really doesn't do anything. Um, but if you could get a really good shield with a lot of block, life, and resistances, and any other damage stat, if you could, could find it on a shield, then I'd recommend that shield. Um, outside of that, for the one, you want one with flat elemental damage, damage over time as an affix, and you want to have as much ignite on hit as possible. Um, now, I also would recommend getting one with spell mana cost reduction, where you can, because it's really, really expensive if you're trying to cast hunger, Hungering Souls constantly. Now, before that point, um, there's, a, there's the, I think it's the Flame Something Torch. That's basically how I leveled this build up, and that was the most effective way to level it, so that's what I'd recommend for leveling. Uh, now, Isadora's Tomb Binding is by far the best in socket um, when sort of running around from an armor standpoint. It's really hard to find a piece of <coughs> belt armor which even gets close to this for this build so far. But this is something that I'll be looking to try and switch out further into the build. And then beyond that, the Invoked the Scorching Grasp, really effective. Fire damage over time, ignite on hit. Flame Ward really doesn't do anything, but cast speed with fire skills does. And if you could get a set piece... Um, on this then basically do even more damage with more elemental spell cast speed which would apply to hungering souls because the tag is now changed from necrotic to fire once you apply soul fire um, beyond that second ring elemental damage damage over time life and resistances pretty simple stuff gloves uh, damage over time if you can get cast speed on this as well armor health regeneration i have and any other elemental resistances any other stats are fine or experimental stats to try and get car speed or whatever if you can get it do it boots uh i've just got basic ass boots with elemental resistances health movement speed and armor and a bit of vitality these are nowhere near best in socket but this gets the job done and then beyond that the most important item in the build soul fire so you can't use soul fire until level 34 basically i just leveled up with hungering souls and uh chthonic fissure early on and infernal shade and that did the job anyway you get to level 34 pretty quickly and then yeah once you get this your damage just goes through the roof and just going through the campaign and leveling through early monoliths is just a piece of piss um now outside of this i'm using singularity because we don't need to apply crit we're applying dot and fire damage and damage over time with elemental so this is probably one of the better ones to have socketed though you can only have one in here and then i've got 71 uh, percent increased damage over time while you have ailment overlord and we have always have an ailment overlord and we'll talk about that when we talk about the skills um and then basically yeah health resistances health health and resistances um basically that's what you want to go with to try and get your health pool up as much as possible and the other thing would be armor in there too and or any car speed stats that you can get would be ideal that's it for gearing for now now you could switch out and use calamity in the helm and you could switch out and use dark shroud um, a couple of options there, but up to you. You can play the build how you want, um, depending on how you feel, just adjust accordingly. Okay, so skill setups. So we're running Hungering Souls, Chthonic Fissure, uh, Infernal Shade, Transplant, and Summon Bone Golem. So we've still got a fair bit to go because we've got to level these up above level 20, and that's going to come down to gearing. But basically with this, we're going to take Hungering Souls, we'll level into Forbidden Pact, uh, down into Grave Bond, and then we want to get Soul Swarm, uh, two points in a Dominion of un uh, unde Undeath. And then beyond that, we want Life Hunt because cast speed is really important and also spell range so we can cast off screen. Then we go to Risen Cemetery. This is going to give us 40% probability for extra projectiles into De Descent of Madness, which is going to give us 100% increased dot. And the other thing is Reaper's Gaze, which gives us a 5% 
cull threshold, kill threshold, cull threshold, which is going to help you clear enemies even better. If we can get more points into this, then I'm going to put more points into Reaper's Gaze at this point. And then that's basically it. Hungering Souls is really easy to level up. But yeah, you'll notice a pretty big damage spike once you switch out to, um, to Soulfire. Um, and then Chthonic Fissure. I then went across into Death From Below. I scaled into Ignite Mantle of Flames, four out of four points into there. Moved into Pyrochasm. And then two points in the Ash Cloud. Then back down into Grasp of the Undying. Eradication, which is going to do more damage to bosses. One point in a Fragile Crust. Then into Spirit Gale. Um, which really doesn't do anything for us. We're just traveling at this point. Severed wards, and then down to Singed by Terror, which is going to give us Fire Shred, which is going to increase the level of damage from Ignites to enemies, as far as I'm aware. Then into uh, Infernal Shade. We'll come up, we'll grab Influence, up into Torment Beacon, into Baneful. This is going to give us Fire Penetration with Ignites. Then we want to grab Ignition, which is going to give us better mana efficiency, quicker cast speed, into Blaze Shade into wildfires, combustion, and then fire conclusion. This is going to allow for explodes at the end of the infernal shade. So there's probably another build I'll do at this, but this is really cool. So fire conclusion gives you bigger AOE, 120% buff. You don't need flame burst at this stage unless you were like playing this as a crit based skill, but that's going to be a different build down the line. Uh, then with uh, transplant, we're going to take fleeting form, which is going to give us cooldown. We're going to take acolytes fervor, which will give us haste as well. Then we'll go up into Anemia, we're going to take Bone Armor, and then scale up Bone Armor, don't take Deep Drink, you don't need it, and then Plate Bone, which is going to increase the effectiveness of that, up into Sticky Blood, and into Siphon, which is going to give us a little bit of recovery as well when we cast it, and finally with our Bone Golem, we're going to go down and grab um, Amalgam of Sentinels into Unnatural Speed, into Hunger, and then we're going to grab the Blood Golem node. And then down into Towers of Bone. This is going to increase the size and threat generation. So that you can use them as a taunt object. Then we'll grab Fragments of the Fallen. Which again will give them increased armor. So it'll make them a hell of a lot more tanky. And then we come up and we grab Amalgam of Mages. Really don't need more than... Uh, well we need 3 points into this to give him Bone Growth. And that'll give him uh, more regeneration based on your character regeneration. Which means you want to push your character regeneration up as much as possible. But yeah, that's basically the skill setups. So we'll talk about the passives next. Rightio, passive tree time. All right, so we're obviously going to put 20 points neat into Acolyte. And there's a lot of minion node points here, but not a lot that actually helps you from a self-cast perspective. So we're going to go 8 points into Forbidden Knowledge, 7 points into Mania of Mortality, and then 5 points into Unnatural Preservation. Uh, this is going to get us to all of our base skills. Then we'll go into the Warlock Mastery, and the first eight, first points are actually probably the best. So the first one went as Soul Stealer, so we could sustain mana, max that out, then into Chaos Flames, then into uh, Spiteful Decay. Then we come across one point in the Spirit Leech so far, but I'll do an updated video on this. We also want to grab Harrowing Armor, max that out, one point into Dark Protections, but we may not need that, I'll probably refine that. Uh, one point into Wither, so we want to do Wither to enemies as well. Now, notice the other thing about these points here. They have, like, modifiers for if you allocate five points, allocate five points. So then we come up and grab Infernal Lash. So we put five points into the here, which means then our skills do Flame Whip or gain Ignition Overlord for 12... Uh, and gain Ignition Overlord for 12 seconds, which is those whip things that you can see going around. And this is going to do even more damage based on the number of Ignites. So if you've got 25 Ignites, which this build has no issues applying... This is going to increase your damage output. And then basically we'll go into Scorched Reach, which is going to, while you have Ignite uh, Overlord, uh, you cast Flame Whip at nearby enemies um, if you've got it on a uh, Ignited Boss or Rare Enemy. And then we come up, we grab the Ashen one. Again, this will give us Ignite Overlord, and it'll also apply Witchfire. Um, so basically, Witchfire is like spreading fire to other enemies. Uh, and then basically uh, Grimhild's Domain will wind up Witchfire and make it more powerful as well. So it increase the number of spread based on a 10 or 15 meter radius. Then we come up and we grab uh, Malefic Body. I've just got one point into this. Into Vessel of Chaos. This is just flat dot. Again, five points. More damage over time per Overlord stat. So if you stack more Overlord stats, do more damage. And then two points in the aspect of death. If we go three points, we damn ourselves and we'll basically kill ourselves. So we can't put any more points into that. This will just pop our life, uh, our increased health, uh, will increase our health and will increase damage per negative element. 
Um, and this is where, like, if you're doing, like, um, self-ignite or something like that, you'll definitely be capping this out. And then we're going to cap out a Curse Seer, which means uh, we also get, uh, when damage leaves you below 35% if you put three points in, you cleanse all of the curses on you and on enemies within, uh, you and enemies within 50 minutes and gain ward per curse. So initially I was scaling ward on this, but this is just really good to have. And we'll probably have a play around with some of the other stats in here. I was also looking at things like Necromancer and taking uh, Elixir of Hunger and then applying Hunger into this build as well, potentially. And the Lich would be like Acrophia um, or Survival of the Cruel, and then we would do Spell Leech as well on the build. But basically, that's where we're at from a uh, from a passive tree scenario. And I'll put the, uh, the build planner below in the description as well, so you can see how I've spec this build out as it is right now. Okay, so hopefully this is a cool enough build for you to try. Um, I'm probably going to max this build out over tonight and the next few nights. Pardon me, my nose is playing up like usual when I record. Uh, and then I'll basically be looking at doing some POE build testing, but I think the plan moving forward would be like maybe one or two days a week uh, and a new build in Last Epoch and then my standard POE content as well. But anyway, you guys can tell me in the description what you want to see from me anyway. But uh, anyway, uh, don't forget to like and sub, don't forget to follow the Twitch, and until next time, have fun, and I'll see you guys later.